untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a Reanimator combo deck featuring a pretty unusual card that you may have noticed in the Mastery Pass but probably haven't seen in play yet, and that is Sirtland Elementalist, a 7 mana 8 8 giant wizard, which as an additional cost to cast, we have to reveal a giant card from our hand or pay 2 generic mana. But whenever the Elementalist attacks, we may cast an instant or sorcery spell from our hand without paying its mana cost. So an incredibly powerful effect, although getting the Elementalist in play is quite a chore, since having to pay 9 mana or 7 mana and reveal a giant card is a lot of hoops to jump through. So instead, we're going to try to reanimate Elementalist from our graveyard so we don't have to pay the extra cost, which we can do thanks to Return Upon the Tide, which we can foretell for 2 mana and then cast for 4 mana afterwards, so we can potentially get Elementalist in play on turn 4, and if if we manage to combine it with the extra treasure from Seize the Spoils and the Haste from Escape Velocity, we could potentially be attacking with our Elementalist as early as turn 4 as well, so that's kind of the nut draw that our deck is capable of. And then we also have Unbreakable Bond as another reanimation effect. Now which cards are we trying to cast for free with the Elementalist ability? Alrun's Epiphany is one of them, the 7 mana Mythic Rare Sorcery, making 2 1 1 bird tokens with flying, and letting us take an extra turn after this one, so that's incredibly powerful when we have an elementalist in play which can then let us cast even more spells for free with the ability and then we also have four copies of Seagate Restoration, the 7 mana Mythic Rare Land that we can play untapped at the cost of 3 life, or we can cast the Sorcery, letting us draw cards equal to the number of cards in our hand plus 1, and we have no maximum hand size for the rest of the game, so especially nice if we can chain multiple copies of Seagate Restoration together. So those are kind of the main cards we're trying to cast for free with Elementalist, but of course there's plenty of other instants and sorceries we can potentially benefit from. And then the other reanimation target in the deck are two copies of Koma, Cosmo Serpent, the 7 mana Legendary Serpent, that's a 6-6, six, six, cannot be countered, although we're not going to try and cast it in the deck, since outside of the treasure tokens from Seize the Spoils we don't have any green sources in the deck, but at the beginning of each upkeep we get to make a 3-3 blue serpent creature token named Koma's Coil, and we can sacrifice another serpent at any point to tap target permanent and its activated abilities cannot be activated this turn, or Koma gains indestructible until end of turn, so we've got some built-in protection, and Koma also synergizes quite nicely with the extra turns we can take with Epiphany, since that means additional 3-3 tokens. So this is kind of the late game that our deck is aiming for, trying to get Elementalist and Coma in play as early as turn 4, thanks to Return Upon the Tide. Now this deck has gone through a ton of different iterations, so I've tried a lot of different variants of this deck. In fact, I'll have a scrolling list on the right hand side of all the cards that have been in this deck at some point, so you get an idea of how many different cards I've tried. But for now, let's take a look at the rest of the deck, starting out with two copies of Escape Velocity. This is our way of giving our Sirtland Elementalist haste, so we can attack and trigger the ability right away. Can also escape it out of the graveyard for one and a red, which also synergizes nicely with our Gravebreaker Lamia, which we'll get to in a second. And then we've got a ton of different draw discard effects to get our reanimation targets in the graveyard, and to help us cycle through the deck to find the missing combo pieces, with the full playset of Cathartic Reunion. As an additional cost, we have to discard two in order to draw three. Three. We've got Thrill of Possibility, have to discard one card to draw two at instant speed, and then Seize the Spoils also discards one to draw two, and we also get to make a treasure token, which is very relevant when it comes to comboing off. Then we've got a bit of interaction with four sweeper effects. We've got a split of two copies of Extinction Event and two copies of Storm's Wrath, so we can always draw the wrong one and have more complaint equity. And then we get to our reanimation spells, where Return Upon the Tide doesn't actually have any elves to reanimate, but it's just a way we can potentially cast it on turn four thanks to Foretell. And then we've got two copies of Unbreakable Bond, which also gives our reanimated creature lifelink. And that lifelink counter can also be relevant when up against Heartless Act, since that won't be able to kill creature with a counter on it, and then two copies of a Gravebreaker Lamia, which is a 4-4 lifelink that when it enters the battlefield lets us search our library for a card and put it into our graveyard, so if we don't have one of our reanimation targets in the graveyard already, we can make sure to put one in there, and then we can also potentially put our escape velocity in the graveyard with our Lamia, and then spells we cast from our graveyard cost one generic mana less to cast, so we can potentially escape or escape velocity for just a single red if our Lamia is still in play, so we can potentially play Lamia on 5, and then on turn 6, even using our more expensive reanimation spells like Unbreakable Bond, we can still play Bond and escape on turn 6 to potentially attack and combo off in the very same turn. 
And then going over the mana base, we've got four copies of Temple of Malice, since the Scry one actually comes in handy when setting up our various combo pieces, as well as two copies of Temple of Epiphany. And as you can see, we don't have a whole lot going on on turn one, and on turn three we can often play a tap land and another two mana spell. And then, of course, sometimes you do want to also foretell your Alderaan's Epiphany, especially if you don't have a Elementalist in sight, then you might be better off foretelling it and then casting it for 6 mana, although every now and then you prefer keeping it in hand so you can cast it for free with Elementalist, so that's also an important play that comes up. And then we've got all 12 pathways in the Grixis colors, as well as two basic mountains, since most of our early game is red. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Just need to find a reanimation effect. Lamia can maybe get her escape velocity. And do I want an extra land? Sort of, but I think finding the reanimation spell should still be our priority. Disciple. Don't mind discarding. Koma. So I'll probably just discard Koma end of turn with Thrill. And then probably going to keep Epiphany without foretelling it so we can cast it for free potentially. Although Mono Black could have some instant speed removal. So the haste is going to be important to potentially attack right away while the opponent's tapped out. Although the fact that they see the reanimation target in the graveyard might make them scared and keep up a removal spell. And then I'll Cathartic Reunion, discarding Elementalist and Land. And then we'll play Temple after. Alright, there's my Escape Velocity. So, I've got all the combo pieces we need, and Restoration's a nice one to cast for free. So next turn I can Foretell, and then turn 5 we can Reanimate plus Give Haste. Opponent also for telling some cards. Skull Raid. Alright, the discard spells are adding up. So, I could get rid of Escape, although I would prefer to cast it for one mana. As opposed to having to rely on Lamia surviving to cast it for one out of the graveyard. So that probably means I can get rid of Lamia. And then... I guess I can get rid of my untapped land here since we can always rely on Restoration to be a land as well. Although with this cry I wouldn't mind drawing towards another untapped land. So we can foretell. Play this. Don't need another one. Alright, we'll see if they make us discard again, in which case I'll have to take a slower approach. Could have been reasonable to just foretell all my cards to make sure they're safely in exile. Yeah, another Skull Raid was to be expected. So, yeah, that's making my line of play a lot less exciting. Hasty Giant with nothing to flash back doesn't do much, so we might go for Coma instead, which they could still potentially remove. I guess we just keep Epiphany and then foretell it. And then... Wait for them to tap out to escape velocity. We can empty our hands so discard effects don't affect us anymore. And then I'm going to wait for them to tap out, so we can reanimate and give haste. Another Disciple, just a 1-1. One, one. Extinction event can clean those up. Might as well. Yeah, discard tribal deck is going to make comboing off pretty difficult with our elementalists, so Koma's probably our best bet. But if they just sit on a pile of removal, it's also going to be difficult, so not sure how this game is going to play out. 
but for now I guess we can Epiphany and start chipping in with our tokens. Foretells, maybe another Skull Raid. Storm's Wrath we'll have to keep in hand. So they might play a discard spell before casting Skull Raid. So they get to draw one. Opponent doesn't tap out yet. Thrill of possibility, bit of an awkward draw. Alright, there's Turgrid. So they probably have Soul Shatter in the deck, is my guess. Although there's something interesting, so now I can return upon the tide. Bring back elementalists. Give it hastes. Smash. And cast return, bringing back coma. And now they soul shatter me, I can sacrifice elementalists and keep Koma around. Yep, there's a soul shatter. Opponent gains control of my giants. Alright, Koma survives, so luckily they didn't have a second soul shatter. And Acquisitions Expert gonna take my Thrill. Blood Chief's Thirst takes out a token, that's fine. So I think they're in trouble here, as we'll get a second token. And then we can use Coma to tap down Elementalists. So if I were to attack with everyone now, they would block the token chump coma. So I would rather have them chump with their uh, Turgrid here. Alright, and our opponent concedes, so... Yeah, this was going to be a pretty tough matchup, a deck filled with discard spells and potential instant speed removal, but we managed to wait it out and find a nice window to get our reanimation spells going. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a hand that is missing, a creature to reanimate and a reanimation spell, but a lot of card selection to keep digging through the deck. So it's still... A reasonable hand to keep. We've got interaction with Storm's Wrath if needed, if not we can get rid of it. Facing turn one island. And Secret Keeper gonna mill me, all right. So now we just need to find a reanimation spell if our opponent's gonna fill the graveyard for us. Might not be a matchup where we need Storm's Wrath unless we need to deal with a Ruin Cramp. Although they didn't play it right away here, so they probably don't have one. And there's Unbreakable Bond, so. We'll Reunion. Discarding, Reunion, and probably Wrath. And then Caesar Spoils can ramp into a turn 4 Unbreakable Bond, hoping we can reanimate Elementalist here. 
Bound spells could also be effective against us. Although not every mill deck has a ton of those. So at the very least we can seize the spoils discarding Elementalist. And then with double epiphany we can do some damage. Might have to watch out for some counter spells as well. So a single reanimation spell might not be enough. Right, let's get rid of one of these elementalists. I guess we'll still need an untapped land here in order to cast some breakable bond. The fairy's tutelage. It's gonna speed up the milling process quite a bit as well. They might have some card draw in hand to combo with it, like into the story. Alright, so I could play Restoration untapped and then Unbreakable Bond, hope they can bounce my creature. That's probably my best bet. Alternatively we can play Lamia to get the Haste enchantment in the graveyard, but then I'm still pretty far from casting my reanimation spell and giving my creature Haste. So I think this is probably our best bet. And if our opponent taps out to draw cards, it's not too bad. And double epiphany might be able to close out the game. A mermaid gonna copy tutelage. So, still half of our library remaining, more or less. And our opponent passes, so start by attacking. And cast Epiphany. Opponent can chump and sacrifice Wind Robber. They can chump again with Secret Keeper, so they do have quite a bit of a life total buffer thanks to those two creatures. But we get to cast some other spells in the meantime too, to potentially increase our clock. Ideally we would have a coma in play at the same time as our extra turns to generate some tokens at the same time. So by sacrificing Wind Robber we also don't gain 8, not that it matters against the mill deck. Escape Velocity in the graveyard could come in handy, although we currently don't have another reanimation spell. So we'll seize discarding Coma. And another Epiphany would be a good draw. There's still two left in the deck. Opponent cycles Boon. It's gonna mill for another four. Alright, and then we get to Scry. And Epiphany, definitely a keep. And for once, we get to actually draw the card we keep on top with our Scry against the mill deck. Actually could have played Lamia and given it haste with escape velocity thanks to the discount. 
so probably should have started there. And then we'll put another coma in the graveyard, make it more likely to draw another epiphany. Not that we'll need it. And then I guess we'll make the play we described. Could even escape another velocity here, but it doesn't seem necessary. Cast another epiphany. Sweep. Alright, so we got to combo off against the mill deck. Luckily they didn't have any bounce spells at the ready. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a decent hand. Got our turn to potentially foretell a return. Turn three sees. And then turn four we can reanimate. Facing what looks like maybe the Death Touch Tribal deck. Which doesn't bode well for Elementalists being able to attack, but we can maybe pair it with Storm's Wrath. So I could foretell. Um, but I guess we're pretty likely to be able to return the turn after we seize anyway. So I guess I'll get the uh, tap land out of the way in the meantime. And then cathartic doesn't seem necessary. And then hopefully I can keep restoration in hand and we just naturally draw another untapped land. Opponent just sits for two. Doesn't seem to be overextending. So... We'll seize discard elementalists. Ah, there's our land. Now we do have Gravebreaker Lamia in hand, so that could put the haste enchantment in our graveyard to make it more likely we get to attack if our opponent's holding removal here. Could send out Lamia as a distraction as well. Although both Extinction Event and Storm's Wrath would also end up killing Lamia. Or we could just go for return and hope it works out. Yeah, the way our opponent's been playing, I strongly believe that they will be able to kill my giant if I reanimate it, so between Extinction Event Storm's Wrath, I guess we can Extinction Event here, that way if they have Call of the Death Dweller they can't reanimate their creatures. And save my treasure. And maybe our opponent will change their game plan up. And we can maybe get them with a hasty giant at some point. Cathartic. Alright, I think I'm going with Lamia and Hastes. And then we'll have to take it slow. They've got a fight spell here, maybe. A ram through. Yeah, let's get our escape velocity. And then don't need thrill. So next turn we can foretell for two. And then if we find land six, which I guess we have with restoration, we could also escape velocity. No real need to cathartic reunion. But again, if my opponent has instant speed removal like ran through, they can still kill my giants even if we give it haste. Which, you know, we could potentially counteract with Storm's Wrath, but opponent's also not really pressuring us all that much. Can maybe just start hard casting Seagate Restoration to pull ahead. So we're okay playing a longer game. Alrun's Epiphany also going to be great in this matchup, as we get a bunch of 1-1s to block the Death Touchers.
Uh, Epiphany, I can hard cast here. Could also Restoration first, while we still have a lot of cards in hand. So if our opponent wants to sit on their removal, we'll let them. Alright, there's Questing Beasts. We're at 5. And for single green we shouldn't fear any removal really. So this is perfect. We get to reanimate our Giants. And then we'll have to Storm's Wrath. Instead of Epiphany to make sure we can clear the questing beasts. Otherwise they would just trade. Another questing beast could be problematic, but this is probably the best we could do. And then I want to keep digging for another reanimation effect in case they kill elementalist here. So we'll discard probably Thrill and Seize. Keep another Reunion. Alright, can cast another Restoration. So don't hate my spot. Although don't expect Elementalist to survive. But our opponent explodes, so next turn we could attack. Cast a free Epiphany, and using our mana we can still play Restoration, or better yet, play Restoration for free before playing a land and casting a spell to have maximum number of cards in hand, and then Epiphany using our mana, take an extra turn and we'll have a million cards in hand to work with, can probably get a second giant going onto the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Potentially looking at a turn 4 coma. Still need black mana, so that's what I need to prioritize here. Although, Seize the Spoils, I guess, can also make black with our treasure token. So, take three. And then this turn, I probably want to Thrill as opposed to Foretelling Return. Although, both lines could work. I guess if the plan is to reanimate turn four, I can rely on the treasure. Although, that does require potentially playing Restoration as a land, which is less exciting if we want to go with Elementalist, but if we reanimate Coma, then this line probably makes sense. Opponent Mono White so far. So Seize the Spoils discards Coma. We found Black Mana, but it's tapped. Alright, so hopefully they don't have a great answer for Coma here. As we see a Righteous Valkyrie. And then we can work on reanimating our Elementalist as well. Next turn I might tap down their land so they can't cast Elspeth Conqueror's Death, which is one of the better answers to Coma in white. Although Banishing Light is surprisingly effective too here. So that's unfortunate. Don't see that one very often. Alright, let's uh, Thrill. Keep digging. And Reunion's pretty good too. Already have triple blue. Now we don't have haste yet. If we can find our haste enchantments, we can chain together Epiphany and probably win the game in one big sequence. For now, Extinction Event on Odd looks good. Alright, Mall of the Skyclaves, Enchant Speaker. for three and then 
got a few options when it comes to foretelling here. I guess I maybe should foretell Epiphany. If we're not going to get to live the dream of reanimating Elemental and attacking with it, if they have another answer. Although it would be cool to see that happen. Could just foretell Return, although that's not going to make a big difference. Because if we find the Haste enchantment, we can play it alongside Unbreakable Bond. So I guess we'll foretell this one. Opponent gains 2 up to 17. Apparition cannot exile tokens. And a Rune of Sustenance on the Maul. Alright, picked up another Epiphany. So, what are we thinking? Do we try to reanimate our giant here? Or do we just take an extra turn with Epiphany? Which doesn't sound bad, so I'll start there. Give ourselves a chance of potentially drawing our Haste's enchantment. Alright, there we go. So we get to lift the dream here. Bring back Elementalists. Give it haste. Send with the team. Cast another Epiphany. And we've got another one incoming as our opponent concedes. Sweet, so yeah, had to be a bit patient here, but eventually managed to combo off. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and this hand's got double epiphany, no creature to reanimate, and no reanimation spell, but a seize the spoils, so it's a pretty speculative keep, but I'm gonna still go for it. And then... Definitely gonna need some red. Turn two, I could foretell. Ooh, there's Elementalist, so... I'm less inclined to foretell now since we want to keep some number of epiphanies in hand to cast for free. Turn 3 Cs, and yeah, I mean, best case scenario, we draw into a reanimation spell that we get to cast on turn 4. Turn 1 Opt, I'll face no covered Islands, and now Mountain. And there's my reanimation spell. Now, our opponent's pretty likely to have some counter spells and or bound spells, like Brazen Borrower, so that could be an issue. And they know what's up now that we discarded Elementalist. Opponent with Thrill of Possibility discards Frantic Inventory. And taps out for Teferi's Tutelage, so never mind. Opponent was a mill deck all along. Alright, so they might not have a ton of answers here. And double Epiphany. Plus an 8-8 can close out a game pretty quickly. If their interaction is removal spells like Blitz, the Thunder Raptor, and Storm's Wrath, they wouldn't be able to kill Elementalist. And the third Epiphany, would you look at that? So, how much damage could we deal here? 8, then 10, then 12. So that's 44 damage combined, if I'm not mistaken, as our opponent already concedes to the first of many epiphanies. Sweet, so we got to see our deck popping off a few times today, especially satisfying when we get to combine our Elementalist with Alrun's Epiphany, but also very nice if we get to do it with Restoration. Best case scenario, you have one giant that's casting Restoration and the other one casting Epiphany, so they also combine nicely, although that was much easier when the deck still ran Thwart the Grave to potentially reanimate two giants at the same time, but that ended up being cut in the end, so there's definitely a lot of ways you can approach the deck, as you've seen in the introduction. I've tried a lot of different cards, but I'm relatively happy with the final build here. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.